writers, uh -huh. and it's going to be, it's, uh, I, I don't know when it's going to be out, but it's called Cuentos, uh -huh. and um, it's a beginning, it's a beginning, and not, unfortunately, uh, not as much, for, for some reason, we're, we're quicker in, in the fields of music and in the visual arts, uh -huh. but language, for now, I, I think there's going to be an explosion and, and, and a renaissance in time. I'd like to see more. Well, is it, is it that the publishers are, are not, uh, not encouraging it or being uh, uh, difficult about taking on uh, writers from a Hispanic background? I don't know that it's so much that. Uh, of course, <laughs> it's tough to be any creative person, whether you're, you know, Puerto Rican or not. It's always, you just have a, a little added burden. Uh, I think that um, it's, the, it's the system, the educational system that, that uh, does not prepare. I think a lot of people are not articulate, that articulate anyway, uh, when they come from working class backgrounds. When they, they, you have to make an effort. I don't mean articulate. I mean um, um, able to write, able to, to master language. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we have another added problem now with the fact that kids watch a lot of television. But more than that, I think it's a language barrier. But Puerto Ricans who are, who are really, really very articulate, love to tell stories, for some reason, they have a problem understanding that English, English is their language of survival. And it's strict, it's a tool by which they can do a lot, uh, perhaps change things. They don't understand that. And then the school system, I think, is really the greatest culprit. Well, part of, part of uh, the thing is also having people uh, be more aware. And I'd like you to get a pencil handy, a piece of paper, if you would, because there'll be something happening uh, on Wednesday, May 18th at 8 o'clock at the Writers Community, yes. 120 East 89th Street. Uh, you can get more information about that by calling 348-0160. Right. And Nicolás, if you could briefly, while that address is still up there, uh, tell us what you will do there. I'm, gonna, I'm going to give a select reading from select, selected works from an unpublished manuscript, which are a collection of stories about a Puerto Rican woman. And it's just going to be, oh, I'll read about two or three stories. Terrific. Okay. We want to thank Nicolás Amor for uh, being with us. Uh, her books, Nilda, Bronx Remembered, and Nueva York, and uh, they're out there for you, so be sure you go after them and get them. Nicolás, thank you. Thank you. We'll be back with more right after this. The Museum of Modern Art, uh, that is the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, a giant institution, an important institution in this town, an institution, however, that hasn't often uh, reached out or really been able to get the Hispanic community involved. There is an important exhibit there now, and that's the Vatican Art Collection. And with me is Rafael Colón Morales. And uh, Rafael has been on Visiones before. He is a, a painter. He is an artist in residence at the El Museo del Barrio. And Rafael, tell me a little bit about what it is that the museum is doing to bring this beautiful and, and impressive collection to the Hispanic community. Well, the Muse museum, uh, Metropolitan Museum has developed an outreach program for the Hispanic communities. In terms of the Vatican collection, they are giving uh, lectures in different areas, institutions of our community in Spanish, and some of them can be bilingual, depending on the audience. Mm -hmm. And also within the museum itself, they will be giving a, a special lecture in Spanish by Dr. Arturo Davila, that will be on the 17th of May, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with the Vatican collection. He's an expert in early Christianity, so he will be able to give a depth to the artworks, which maybe the uh, expectat expectator might not see. Uh, and Dr. Davila is from where? He's from uh, Puerto Rico. He's the director of the Museo de la Universidad in Rio Piedras. Uh -huh. He's an expert in uh, Jose Campeche, who's an early Puerto Rican painter of the 18th century, a uh -huh. great master in oil painting. Uh -huh. And he's, uh, he has written books on early Christianity and the symbolism in many, and in the iconography of many of these artworks. So he'll be giving a lecture in Spanish on the 17th? At the Grace Rainey Auditorium at the Metropolitan Museum. Okay, now what about you and what you'll be doing in connection with this exhibit and trying to uh, bring it to the Hispanic community? Well, I have been giving uh, lectures, and uh, we'll be giving several more in Spanish on the Vatican collection. Uh -huh. And you say you could also do them in English? English or Spanish. Will you be giving some tours? Uh, yes, this month I will be giving several tours. That will be at the museum itself. Uh, I meet the audience at the information desk, and we go to see different galleries. Uh -huh. And I try to uh, develop like a theme uh, for that day. 
Well, we'll give you, uh, the viewers, some information on how they can connect with that, uh, those lectures and those tours. Uh, so have a pencil handy at the end of this segment. But, uh, Rafael, at this point, I thought maybe we could take a look at uh, some of those uh, slides and pictures we have from that collection and uh, comment, if you would, please. Yes, this is uh, the photograph view of the St. Peter's. As you enter the, the Vatican collection, this is what you will first see. This is the most important architectonic uh, building within the Vatican City. It's the Basilica of St. Peter. And immediately you can see the, the importance of this uh, uh, collection. You can see that in front of St. Peter's, there is the Egyptian obelisk that you have in African, African art represented. Mm -hmm. You have the entrance to the temple itself, which is in Greek architecture, architectonic tradition, mm -hmm. and the cupola, which derives, of course, from Roman Empire uh, traditions and, of course, from early Renaissance. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, many cultures uh, within the same uh, context. Okay, and uh, what we're seeing now? This is uh, uh, Pope Urban VIII. He's uh, extremely important in terms of his commitment to art. He commissioned Bernini, Lorenzo Bernini, to uh, finish the, the architecture of uh, St. Peter's. He's famous for the colonnade and uh, also Bernini did many of the important uh, uh, sculptures which are now flanking the throne of St. Peter's. What is that? Oh, that's an early 8th century uh, coffer or casket which actually uh, held a relic of the true cross. Uh, actually, uh, from Jerusalem, they got the uh, pieces of wood which were said to be part of the true cross and they were placed in this uh, uh, coffer uh, for safekeeping. Uh -huh. So it seems to have everything from paintings to sculpture to uh, objects. Yes, it's there. universal. The Catholic, uh, the word Catholic means universal. Uh -huh. So we're seeing Egyptian, Renaissance, Roman, and now we're seeing French art. This is a French painting of the 17th century by Poussin. It represents the martyrdom of Saint Erasmus. Uh -huh. uh, at the moment when he's suffering, he actually his uh, intestines are being taken out, if you can see from oh. this slide. But he survives this, and he keeps on uh, proselytizing for Christianity. Uh -huh. What is that? Oh, this is uh, extremely interesting. This is an early uh, second century gravestone marking. It's actually uh, of a Jewish uh, child. He w it says the inscription, even though it's written in Greek, that he, uh, Judas was, uh, died at seven months of age. We can see it's Jewish because of the candelabrum with the seven branches, uh -huh. the dove, and the palmet. Uh -huh. These are symbols of a, a Jewish religion, which with Christianity at this time was clandestine in Rome. We must remember the uh, Nero, the Emperor Nero, and the uh, Roman circus and the Colosseum, where many of these uh, early uh, religious uh, outcasts were uh, martyred. Uh -huh. This is the uh, mainstay of the collection. This is the Apollo Belvedere. Without, the, without it, I don't think the collection could have traveled to the United States. This is really the classic point of the, of the collection. It was actually the first, uh, one of the first items to be collected by uh, Julius II in the early uh, 16th century. The Apollo Belvedere is a Roman copy of, an, uh, of an, a Greek original. It represents the uh, Greek uh, classic ideal in terms of the face, the features, the, the body. Of course, here Apollo is represented as a, a war god. He has a bow and a arrows uh -huh. with him, and there is a snake close to him, if, we, if we, you saw the, the whole sculpture. Let me ask you this. Uh, here we see uh, some examples of pottery, but speaking more generally, how would you compare the Vatican's collection of art with what is available in any of the museums throughout the world? How would it compare? Well, the Vatican has uh, selected mas masterpieces, uh -huh. which... Uh, Many of the museums uh, have difficulty in, in acquiring, uh, specifically the great masters of the Renaissance, Michelangelo, Rafael Sanzio, and uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. They were actually, some of them lived within the Vatican itself for several mm -hmm. years and produced their works right there. And this is an opportunity which uh, I, don't, I cannot think of any museum which has done. You as an artist, Rafael, uh, were you personally excited when you knew that this collection was coming to the Metropolitan? Oh yes, extremely so. It, uh, uh, I was thinking of the paintings which I would have the opportunity to see. I was thinking of the Caravaggio, the Deposition, a beautiful uh, painting, monumental in size. I would have the opportunity to see it first uh, hand. No? It's a difference between seeing a painting as in a reproduction and seeing the painterly quality mm -hmm. of the surface. Now you can feel the warmness of the artist uh, working on it. You know, Rafael, uh, it's often occurred to me at the times when I've been to the Metropolitan, which is a wonderful museum and has many uh, beautiful and gorgeous and inspiring things, uh, mm -hmm. how few are the uh, Latinos or Latino faces that I, that I see going to that museum? And I'm curious what might be your theory as to why the Hispanic community uh, uh, participates so little in that museum. 
But I want to first of all to say that it's changing. We, uh -huh. We're getting, uh, uh, through this outreach program and other uh, activities, we're getting a larger number of Hispanics coming to the museo. I think in part uh, it's the big uh, staircase, the temple uh, architecture, which sort of uh, keeps you away a little. But I myself, I, even though I grew up in the Bronx, I began visiting the museum when I was 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was a great inspiration to come uh, to see art firsthand. And that was one of the things which actually uh, put me on the track of, uh, of painting. Well, also, it seems to me that there hasn't been very much of a uh, Hispanic or Latin American or Caribbean presence there in terms of the works and so on at the museum. Is that, so that's a, an accurate representation? Yes, although the Metropolitan has a, a several a artworks from Latin America in its, its collection, it does not exhibit them as often. And of course, it's just several. It does not have the, the output, the major output of a Latin American artist mm -hmm. uh, represented there. For, I'm thinking of Diego Rivera, Siqueiros, and mm -hmm. artists from Puerto Rico itself, like Jose Campeche, mm -hmm. even though a show is in the running, mm -hmm. uh, Jose Campeche. And there was a show in 1974 of the art heritage of Puerto Rican art, mm -hmm. which produced a beautiful catalog, and it's uh, important, I think, in developing this, uh, this interest no, on the part of the Hispanic and Puerto Rican community in the museum to develop more exhibits uh, and make available to the public that which uh, is part of their history. No? Well, I was happy to hear you say that things are changing and that there is much more of a, an attempt to reach out to the community and bring the community into the museum. To get back to the question of the lectures that Dr. Davila and yourself and the, and the tours of the Vatican exhibit that uh, they'll be giving, uh, you can get information on that, and if you have your pencils handy, the Vatican lectures in Spanish as well as the, the tour information uh, of the exhibit uh, with Rafael, for more information, you can call 879-5500, extension 3930. Of course, that is uh, in area code 212. That number again, 879-5500, extension 3930. We certainly hope that you will take advantage of that opportunity to uh, get that perspective on an exhibit which I'm sure you'll find fascinating and, and impressive. Uh, Rafael, I'd like to thank you for having been with us once again. And it's nice to see that uh, as art and culture uh, begins to explode more and more from the community, that there are so many things going on in so many ways that the community can plug in, not only by taking part of your lecture series, but also reading the books of Nicolás Amor and the other authors. Hasta la próxima. I'm David Diaz. See you then.